they get the blame. What I was talking about is that when you go on the journey with the divination arts or I Ching or whatever it is, and say that you have an interest in this thing, not all people, Chris, are good people. And the vast majority of people who get into occultism are particularly not good people. Again, this is just coming from me, so it's a personal, um, I can only speak from my own personal experience. So if then madness or some sort of neurosis or even criminal activity takes place, you know, don't be blaming the occultism. Blame the person. Look at that, what they did. Who are these people? What did they get into this for? We have this sort of, are we that clueless to think that everybody starts in the same trap? You know, like a dog race? Everybody starts on the same line, at the same hurdle, and then after the gun is fired, uh, you know, they're all going to stay in a sort of uniform way? People do not start as uniform people. There's people who get into these subjects who are very, very spiritual and bright souls and intelligent and, and moral. And then there are deeply, deeply immoral people who are interested in this because they want power over people, they want to have uh, sexual power, or they want to have you know, other kinds of things that attract them. And therefore, if that person then meets you know, demons, so to speak, you know, are, are, are we really going to say, are we, are we going to still be so primitive as to say, oh, the tarot is evil, astrology is evil? Hang on a minute. That, that, that this does not add up at all. Well, that's amazing that you mentioned that because that's what I tell people all the time. And I'm starting to wonder, does the Illuminati really have the truth? And if so, it's not the truth that makes them evil. It's what they do with it. Well, that's a brilliant question. But so let's let's go like this. Let's take it like this. We might answer the question by saying, is there really a truth? Because that also could be the problem there. Is there really a truth or is there only individual people's truth? You see, this is what we have to handle. If you were to ask me, I would say each person's truth is the truth. And of course, immediately when you say that, you, you, we would notice that there's a dark side to that statement. Because, oh, wow. Um, it's, 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 it's very good to say it because on one, the positive side is that everybody should walk their own path. Everybody should come up with their own conclusions. Everybody has the freedom to understand what is the truth you know, for themselves. The downside of that is that then that is tantamount to also saying that I can do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. My truth leads me to believe that I can just, you know, um, walk on other people, abuse the world, nothing matters. Ultimately, there's no ultimate reality. Uh, so I just live in a sociopathic way in which I just do whatever I feel like. Because, in fact, that is the case, isn't it? If you go and interview any sociopath, they will always mitigate their, their behavior by saying, eh, that's what I believed at the time, okay? I just do what I want to do. I don't believe in anybody else. I don't trust nobody but myself. You'll always find this. Absolutely. So this is the, again, fine line. It's a, it's a problem. Okay, take the opposite. Say I'm, I put a new hat on and go, no, no, there is only one ultimate spiritual truth. That is, again, has a very, very beautiful side to it. Hmm. Because that will, then you will, if you believe that, then you go, oh, I'm so glad to hear that because I needed that. I need, as a human being, I want to know that there's a higher purpose for everything. Somebody's told me that there's a higher truth. I really believe that. And now I'm going to seek for it. I'm going to look, look at religion. I'm going to look at atheism. I'm going to look at theosophy. I'm going to walk the earth. I'm going to learn about nature. I'm going to look into things because there's this higher truth that all religions have spoken about. And you're going to go on that journey. However, there is also the dark side again. What's the dark side? The dark side of that is that some institution can come along and say, we are the only ones who have access to that higher truth. Oh, we didn't make it, but we are its ministers. And therefore, now we have to subjugate you. We have to collectivize you. You have to do as we say. And the truth is not necessarily in your keeping. And we know this has, in fact, happened because every religious institution tells you this. And every Masonic type institution tells you this. They work entirely on the promissory note. That if you do as we say, tomorrow you will have this amount of knowledge, this level of arcane. And I'm not, I'm not even going into whether or not this knowledge exists. I'm just pointing out the fact is there's a promissory level. And then you could subdivide that again. If a Mason was here with us, he'd say, but don't you understand? The reason why we do that is because we want to purify man. We don't want man, you know, the ugly, uh, contaminated person from the street with all of their prejudices and lunacy. 
and disrespect to gain the kind of knowledge that we want. No institution does this, no school will allow it, no business will allow it, and you have to give them that. You go, yeah, you're right, you're quite right. In fact, I've said it myself on many occasions that, you know, perhaps the impure person shouldn't have any, you know, shouldn't or won't be able to gain knowledge. So in everything that you look at, you have this ambivalence. And this is what a lot of fundamentalist type people can't deal with. They cannot deal with that with, number one, reality is changing every minute. They can't deal with the fact that you have to think in terms of the dialectics, opposites. If you hold a truth here, think about its opposite. If people could do this, there'd be no war, there'd be no destruction, because you'd already in your own mind be conceiving of what the antithesis is to the, the positions that you hold. And I always have said, as I, and I'll say it again, I'll frame it again by saying, and that is not a collective action. If you hold, uh, if you're able to have an opinion over here, and then you also create a kind of um, meditative state in which you're able, intellectual state, uh, to conceive of its opposite, in that juggling act, in that weighing and balancing act, I mean, it happens in every single courtroom. It actually does go on in the mind continually anyway. What I'm describing is not esoteric. This actually does happen on a certain degree in the mind. But whatever changes will happen are going to happen individually for you. In some instances, you might have to give up an opinion because by thinking about its opposite, you may go, you know something, I was wrong. So now I go with the antithesis. I accept that the opposite point of view is actually the more correct. This is what Socrates advised people to do. It's what all rational people should be doing. In many other instances, you'll say, oh, I've weighed up the opposites. And no, I think they're false. I'm going to continue holding to this idea that I had originally. You see, but that is going to be an activity of absolutely uh, nomothetic. It's going to be absolutely unique to you. It's not going to be reproducible by the next person, you see. And maybe it's the same thing with truth. Truth is to me, I can never get away from thinking, you see, that truth is ultimately available to us when we are absolutely so aware of what is the false. Hmm. And that is what is called apophatic learning, negation. Can Being you spell that again negative. for us? Apophatic? Yeah, uh, apophatic. A-P-O-P-H-A-T. And it's... I -C. And it's basically being able to argue with yourself over what's real and what's not without yeah, having having to go to other people uh, no you go to other people but apophatic is basically breaking down deconstruction it's like forensics it's like uh, Sherlock Holmes it's like uh, what detectives do all the time you sift through the information and you exclude whatever is impossible and like Conan Doyle said in one of his books what once you have excluded the impossible whatever remains no matter how improbable must be the truth and, and that's what I mean. And there's various ways of doing this, but I don't believe there's any collective way of doing it. So in my mind, and I, I don't think I've ever been able to get past this myself, as soon as an institutionalized uh, press release is released, you know, that we have the truth, I'm already suspect then. If I, if I see the us, the our, the we, in any kind of proximity to truth or, 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 or speaking of truth, I'm already out of there. Because I really do believe that we are individuals. Our self is not the same type of self as everybody, even though we've completely been mind-controlled by the consensus people to believe this. I believe we're here absolutely for unique purposes. And therefore, I believe our grasp of what is true, you know, there's probably better words in other languages for this, but what is absolutely sustainable is absolutely unique to us. That doesn't mean that later on, after you've found your unique truth, that some other people might share it or, or come to a similar. That's probably bound to happen. But it's irrelevant. Ultimately, philosophically, it's irrelevant. What truth you come to is yours. And therefore, that is the, um, the way that you've arranged your reality. You remember uh, sort of close to the end of the movie, The Wall, mm -hmm. when the uh, pink character has smashed the hell out of his um, hotel room. I mean, he's just destroyed everything. He shaves off his eyebrows. He shaves off his hair. He just destroys. He smashes everything that he owns. It's a metaphor for going through total underworld experience, total chaos. He's, he almost commits suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the movie doesn't leave you with that you know, nihilistic ending. What you then see him do later on is he takes every single piece of everything he broke and he arranges it in a new mandala. It's actually in the movie. You can watch it. He takes everything that he broke 